this is the next phase. We were doing uh, on the uh, Jacob Scallet chuck. Everything's going great, I think. Um, stuff was broke. No, it's not as broke. And moving into the uh, last phase of this one, uh, the bearings are in, uh, the pen fits, everything slides together nicely. Uh, so the one last thing we really need to resolve is this guy. This was uh, Dan is uh, trying to take a little le lesson from Randy Richards. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, that's better. And I'm trying to learn a little bit of Fusion 360. Uh, this is going to be our pin, um, specifically. Uh, we've modeled it really quickly. Randy's been running a series of uh, short videos to help those of us who haven't done this for a career and uh, maybe are interested in learning it, uh, helping us understand and what we're getting into. And um, so I was able to take a few lessons. This is just, you know, the fancy version of it, but uh, it's to the right dimension. Uh, it's like uh, 312 here and then uh, 245 through here and then uh, an inch 410 overall length. So. We're going to be making this, but uh, I thought, well, since it's a straight cylinder with just a little minor change here, why don't I take what Randy's been showing us and try to model it? So I did get it modeled. Uh, I don't have all the dimensions showing on it, but it definitely uh, it helps if I can take this diagram out to the lathe and say, okay, it's a much more effective than, you know, this guy. Ugh. So yes, if I can make a nice clean copy of that, that I can follow, and then I can actually, you know, share it with somebody if they needed it. So anyway, that is currently where we're at. And um, the next thing, we'll have you out in the shop, and we'll be uh, making the uh, making the pin. All right, we're uh, starting on the pin, and uh, we're going to go ahead by. Uh, Squaring this off just a bit, and then we're going to turn it down to 312. Just the rough starting point. Three eight stock, so we're about 373. So, overall print, 1.41, yeah, this is successfully done by, yeah, me, which is something new. Uh, diameter is going to be 312. We have to do this little inset here where it grabs the key, or grabs the pin, rather, and then pops it up and down, and then there's this little left over here. So this is mapped directly off of the original, but uh, actually does really, really help. I'm glad Randy has been working, showing us how to do this. And with others, it's just it's a whole lot more tidy. So the overall length of 1.41.
Hmm. Seems to work pretty good, Randy. Okay. Measure a lot. Yep, I didn't have anywhere near. The finish is pretty good, except for that uh, little dragging issue that I have on the way back. hot mess. We are currently at uh, it's like 318. these because of the clearance, especially around the uh, Life Center. I really think that the reduced shank ones are really worth a lot of money, but uh, it's less material, guys. But it's great if you can get it. pressure trick Randy showed. Seems to work pretty good. Yeah, I've got some more work to do on the lathe, but, you know, upkeeping the tooling is important. So is getting something done. Okay, I'm showing that at 313. 313. Shooting for 312. I think with the wear that we've got, let's break it down here, give ourselves some room, because I don't want to get too loose at the same time. this. That hole is where the pins are going to go through, so that's where it's going to live. Okay, that's kind of snug there, and that's going to have to be a sliding fit. So, if we take oh, a little bit, maybe two, we'll probably be right in the ballpark. Three eleven and a half, thereabouts. Let's put this down. And 
this is the point where it has the least amount of wear. Okay. That's uh, stopping as it bumps into the... Uh, Sliding fit. All right, we uh, kind of chewing away here. Making some rules. slowly using the uh
Okay, we've uh, got a rough prototype of the pin back. Looks roughly like the original. More importantly, fits nicely. Not really loose, but a sliding fit. Take care of that. Not a lot, but just a little bit of label on that one. Just a hint. Okay. Any right, sports fans? So for this one, the pin slides in there nicely fit was pretty good and now it goes over the top why does the camera the battery always go dead all right popping this back off again as I showed you right before the other one cut out pin fits into the housing there's a slot there. Apply just a little bit of lubrication on that pin. Drops down in. Okay. Then I'm going to bring you over the top here for just a second. Oh, there's a floppy camera. Okay. okay, this is what you're going to be faced with when you go back in. It's going to be locked in the hole. Here we go. Here we go. Here's focus. Here's the detents that we spent so many hours trying to get right. And from those, the only way you can get this on that I found is to work its way around. So let me get you in here. Maybe it'll stay focused enough. I found it just as easy to take screwdriver, pick, whatever you got. work those in gently. It's not a big battle. And they're locked in. Okay. Now when you push this down, this isn't locked. There. You saw the difference. Come up. I'm trying to push down. Won't seat. Twist. Locks in. Now this whole housing is locked together. So nothing can back its way off. So that's kind of what's going on. in this whole endeavor. So, we are fast approaching done. Okay, so in addition to what we've already worked on, there is a lock ring. Well, it's a shim ring, if you will. And I'm going to apply just a little bit on it. This grease is really pretty nice, actually. Stays where you put it. Doesn't go anywhere. Now, this is going to keep that from coming up. If you notice, there's a ridge right here. Point to it. There's a ridge right here. This is going to be going over flat. And it's going to keep that from pulling that ring up too high and disengaging. So, we are going to... Put that face down. Look at the machining on that. It's really, really nice. Okay. And then, I haven't done this one yet. The infamous, excuse me for reach, two-piece snap ring. So it kind of goes a little bit something like this. never messed with one before. It can be an interesting endeavor. Looks like it's going to go around. It's going to need to be squeezed. 
Hmm, that's going to be fun. Hmm. All right. Looks like we may have to pull this one out just a bit. Yeah, that's the first time dealing with one of these. I'll have to see how I make this work. Taking it apart wasn't real hard, but uh, one has to go over the top of the other one, and as soon as it starts to go, it gets locked in this snap ring. So, almost like both of these, one's going to have to stay where it is, and the other one's going to have to come out and meet it. As soon as that happens, it gets out of sync. There's one. Okay. That one's down low. Let's see if we can get this on there. Almost. Come on. Okay, there might be cursing coming soon to a channel near. And aha, I was able to get it on there. Um, the trick you needed to do was on this side, you need to make sure that this ring stays locked into its groove. And the other one came around, and I was just getting ready to put some something behind it, and it's like, oh, pop. So clearly, it knew it was met with superior forces without any regard for safety. Okay, so up, no problem. I'll lock it, push down, and then it locks in. It's going nowhere. So when you're initially putting this in, left hand thread then, left hand thread. This needs to be released so it can spin. Okay. And then it's unlocked. bad TV. binding against the keyway, which I need to have it lined up. Well, that doesn't need to be locked. Okay, and then there's the keyway. You know what, I'm wondering, if that keyway wasn't a little bit longer to start in a custom kind of way. Because it is not inconceivable that that should be that. There we go. And it's locking right in. And this is where you'll be putting the squeeze on it. position. I need to get a look at one of those. There may have been, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, but looks like this was all there was. 
unless it was made a little different than what I had thought. Hmm. I want to go surf on eBay and see if anybody's got one scattered all over the place. But there you have it. If I put this down, it's going to rotate and lock into position. Hard to get it when it's not on the lathe spindle. Now she's locked. 100%. Unlocked. And then locked. Okay. Let's go put it on the lathe and see what happens. Okay, we're back. Uh, we currently have it mounted. And uh, everything seems to be working just fine. Um, kind of show you where I'm at. Hear that knocking? That's desired. Okay. It's a 5 8 piece of drill rod. No problem. This is unlocked. See the gap? Right here, that's unlocked. Okay, get things situated again. All right, uh, D13 mounting goes right in, spin it right up, and right here, there's the locking of the knocking. And there's where it locked in. Now it is one solid unit. Isn't that lovely? I haven't dialed it in for straightness or anything relative to that, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and unlock it. Pull the sleeve. Again, this prevents it from coming apart too far. Just like that. Move it all the way in. Push it in lock. It locked. It's there. Isn't that neat? Getting the uh, chuck started, section right here, it's it's not bad at all. It's much easier when it's on the lathe than it is to try to do it on the bench chop. Okay, there's the insert, dusty. This is a 5 eighths to 3 quarter. This area cleaned up nice with the evapo rust. I was going to go in and maybe play around with it, but it's like, hmm, we'll have to dial this in. So load that in. And in my case, I just want to see roughly where the keyway is, so I know roughly where it is. And it's going to go in and lock up very lightly. Okay, and then there you go. I just hit the keyway, and then away we go. That's that's nothing I'm going to worry about. On in. Lock it. It's locked. That is slick. So I think we've turned a non-functional to a fully functional. And of course it needs to be dialed in to make sure it's straight and all that wonderful stuff. But the end result is I think the House of Broken Dobbs things unbroke it. So Thank you all for your patience and kindness and uh, some of the editing from the previous ones. Um, 
camera goes out of focus, you've shot your video, some of you creators understand what I mean. It's like, okay, you're sunk. There's no reshooting this whole thing. So anyway, uh, that's it from Dan. Thank you all the new subscribers. I really appreciate your time and patience. Uh, I try to make these things interesting. Uh, I learn a ton. My wife always yells at me, you're on YouTube again watching. I says, no, I'm on YouTube again learning. So, uh, from the House of Broken Dobbs things, and now the host and broad, host of the uh, House of Broken Dobbs things, plus a Jacob's Collet Chuck. Uh, this is Dan. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, everybody have a great, safe weekend.